The future will not be held in your hand, and it won't be on your face either. The future of technology might almost be invisible. Thank you. Humane has been one of the buzziest and secretive startups in Silicon Valley. With Apple alum founders who created things like the iPhone and the iPod, you can see why it's garnered so much attention. Yesterday, the first look at the device from Humane, an AR projector that fits in your pocket, was leaked on Twitter. Is this the future as we know it? Is this the iPhone killer? Let's take a look. Humane has been a very secretive company up to this point. We knew they were working on a hardware device, but weren't really sure if it were related to a pair of glasses that you wore on your face or some type of projector. There hasn't been much on their website beyond some buzzy videos that feel very Apple-esque, and up to this point there haven't been any leaks. That changed yesterday at TED. Humane was founded by two Apple alums, Emron and Bethany, who co-founded the company after creating some of the most iconic products that you know, like the Mac, iPod, iPhone. And Bethany was involved as a director of software engineering, and together the hardware and software pieces that we know make Apple products special is something that they'll also bring to Humane. A big focus of Humane up to this point has been about bringing humanity back to technology. This idea that software, hardware, and ourselves should work in perfect harmony and not be something addictive that we scroll through. And with an extensive team of designers, builders, manufacturing, and people from all across different companies and experiences, it's pretty neat to see the wide range of experience that has come to define this team at Humane. Yesterday, after a TED Talk from founder Emron, the news publication Inverse was able to get some exclusive looks at the device itself, pulling from the TED Talk that is yet to be released. Agree. Sorry. This is my wife. I'm gonna have to get this. Hello? Hey, babe. Hey, Bethany. How's it going? Good, are you a Ted? Yeah, I'm on the red circle right now, actually. Oh, great. That's it's interesting to see the AR projection to see the incoming call on your hand. The projector, which is mounted on Emron's t-shirt, is able to then project that on your hand. It's unclear how he was actually able to trigger the acceptance of this phone call. You'll notice he didn't actually move his other hand over or press any buttons. Maybe he was listening to his voice to know that he wanted to actually accept the phone call. You can see him pull the device out of his pocket here. It looks about the size of an AirPods case and I'm wondering if this were actually using some types of magnet on the back end to keep this attached or if it was just sitting in a custom made little pocket but it's something that will definitely have to be thought through. We don't often have a t-shirt or something else that would perfectly put this here so if there's any type of weight this is going to feel really weird on something like a cotton t-shirt in the summer. I also wonder how the AR projection would actually work somewhere outside where you have to play with things like sunlight and it's not a dark TED talk room. But you can see that Emron uses a, what appears to be a button to trigger the device. You can see that it's taking the input by the blinking lights and it does some pretty nice translation. This must all be happening on device, so they probably got some sort of processing chip. One big thing about this device is that you don't need a smartphone to use it. I'm curious about this device, if it's all happening on the device itself or if it is connected to cellular. It's a pretty neat, neat feature to think about using this if you are traveling, or doing some type of translation, but I'm not sure how much people actually use Google Translate, which has pretty much the same functionality Imagine this, you've been in meetings all day and you just want a summary of what you've missed. Catch me up. Patrick is coming to tomorrow's design meeting. Bethany wants to move next week's dinner and Oliver is asking about soccer this weekend. These are emails, calendar invites and messages all surfaced up to the top. The ability to catch you up on your day is a pretty neat feature. I do wonder though how much this would be used too, 
with our email inboxes being a giant clutter of mess. I'm not sure that I would be too happy if the summary here given on my day was you missed 15 emails from Nike and Amazon.com with new promotions. This also seems like the type of thing that is nice, but usually when I get a summary I then want to do something from that, and not being able to see those emails I'm not sure how I would actually be able to do anything from here. I'd then have to pull out my phone or computer anyways to take another action. What might be a neat feature here is actually having this device listen to the conversations and things that I've done throughout the day so that I could then get summaries of things that I forgot to do, something that someone wanted me to pick up at the store, or a work colleague who was asking me to complete some task that I forgot. If you haven't seen my video on Rewind AI in your own personal Jarvis, when I saw this device, that's all that I could think about. What if this device was intelligent enough to be my personal AI assistant? Let's say you're health conscious or you have certain types of food considerations. Let me just show you. Picked up one of these chocolates. I used to eat a ton of these when I was a kid. Can I eat this? A milky bar contains cocoa butter. Given your intolerance, you may want to avoid it. So I can't eat these anymore. Um, But what's cool is my AI knows what's best for me, but I'm in total control. I'm going to eat it anyway. Enjoy it. <laughs> the last demo they showed was the ability for the device to recognize objects that you might want to eat. It seems interesting, but for me, just not that useful. I don't have dietary restrictions, and I'm not that concerned with being able to discern if I want to eat the object in front of me or not. So for me, this just really isn't that helpful, so I don't have a lot much more to say about it. Now, in an interview with Emron Chowdhury, he says that the experience should be screenless, seamless, and sensing, allowing you to access the power of compute but being present in your current surroundings. There's a balance that for now feels out of place because we're reaching and looking at our cell phone. Not sure I agree with this entirely. Looking at my hand with some air projection is cool, but I'm not sure it's that different from looking at a piece of glass with the same information. I also start to wonder about how this will look like in sunlight. Will it track my hand? How close does my hand have to be to my shirt? It's just a bit of an awkward motion to have your hand that close to your chest, but Maybe I'll feel different once I test it out. And for the device itself, the speaker sounds loud enough, but I'm sure that was just for the demo. I can't imagine being in a crowded place and actually wanting to have my device talking out loud like that. There'll have to be some t sort of headphones this is connected to, so unless they're working on their own headphones, I'd imagine that they really want this connected to some type of wireless headphone like AirPods. I'm not a hater on this technology, and I'm not a hater on Humane. I actually am really excited for where this is going to go. It's always great to have competition in the space, and you can see the AR world is heating up with things like Humane's device and the upcoming device from Apple, rumored to be a pair of glasses. I think this is great for the human technology relationship to evolve beyond screens. It does demand something radically different. We need innovators, technologists, and people like this team who are trying something radically different so that we know what works and what doesn't. Over time, I'm sure this will get better, the device will get smaller, and there'll be new ways to tackle this challenge of all having us be a little more present and less consumed by the screens that we're looking at. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at Humane. I can't wait to watch the full TED Talk when it does come out. As always, if you like these types of videos, please hit subscribe and thanks for watching.